We have with us uh, Kira Rudek, Ukrainian MP. Appreciate you joining us, ma'am. My first question, the second round of talks right now, under the shadow of a second nuclear threat by Russia, how optimist are you with the second round of talks? I'm not optimistic at all. Hello, thank you for having me. Because after the previous peaceful talks, we have received the most aggressive shelling of our cities in the beginning of the war. So when Putin mean, says the word peace, this means war. This means take your rifles and pretend to defend yourself. When Putin says, I want to negotiate, this means I'm gathering troops to seize your city. When Putin is saying, I'm uh, going to uh, re uh, withdraw my troops, this means no, I'm gathering more and more of them. So right now we see it as the tactics of him to uh, make sure that the, the Western countries think that he is ready to peace. He is not. Yesterday, Putin's troops were bombarding the TV uh, tower here in Kiev. So how peaceful do you think is that? They almost destroyed the second largest city in Ukraine, Kharkiv, where they were intentionally bombing the civilian buildings. How peaceful is that? And how is it possible to have a peace treaty with the person who acts like that? It is impossible. He will lie. He will destroy us. So there is no peace that could be made this way. We need to win. We need we need a no-fly zone from our NATO partners, and we need to okay. fight Putin till the end. All right. You know, ma'am, I'm going to bring in my colleague Shiv Varur, as well as in the conversation. As I ask you, we're going to talk about the sticking points that have been in the conversation, you know, in the talks or the peace talks, to so to say, with Russia. But I want to ask you a very immediate question. Kharkiv has been under attack. Is there possibility that Kharkiv could fall to Russia? Because the indication seems to suggest that. We will do everything possible and impossible for this not to happen. Right now, what is the ground status, uh, Ms. Rudik? Uh, the fights are ongoing. They continue shelling. And we are bringing more and more troops there to support Kharkiv and to be able to stand up to our enemy. Is is uh, 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 Kira is is Kharkiv likely to be uh, you know uh, the target of all this very aggressive attacks by Russia because we are on day seven of this invasion right now of Ukraine and uh, President Putin may be under pressure to try and maybe show something. There is also a historical reason as far as Kharkiv is concerned, which you are well aware of. Uh, and uh, he's looking to try and show some kind of big gain because he hasn't been able to make any gains anywhere else. So I agree with you. He's looking for at least like some victories that he could make pictures of and show to Russian people and say, this is why I was doing all of that. Look, however, he was not able to do any. So no uh, success in Kiev, no success in Kharkiv, no success in the uh, south of the country where he was trying to get himself a uh, path to the North Sea and, and uh, the channel to support Crimea. There, there has been none. And right now, all the uh, activities are intensified just to get this big victory. So in Kharkiv, he is shelling the, the city. In Kiev, we are preparing for the siege. And on the west and on the um, south of the country, he just uh, keeps uh, bringing more and more troops to uh, fight the uh, Ukrainian army. Ms. Rudik, you said that uh, Putin's getting desperate. Uh, you know, we can see what's going on right now in Kharkiv. Yes. But, you know, in the midst of this, the humanitarian crisis is only but escalating. Uh, you know, the kind of damage to, you know, life, to property, you, you, you know best what's happening, especially in Kharkiv. Therefore, I want to ask you those two sticking points that uh, Ukraine has been firm on, on your neutral status, which is non-negotiable, where Russia comes into question. And on the other hand, the territories which Russia has recognized as independent republics. For both these sticking points, does Ukraine still stand by them or is there room for negotiation now? Well, we still stand by these points because this is exactly what we are fighting for. There is no way in 21st century that the, uh, one country can go into another country and demand uh, for it to change it, what is written in its constitution and to change what uh, how the territories look like. We have um, a membership of EU uh, um, and NATO written in our constitution. This is the will of Ukrainian people. What the hell does Putin have to do with that? 
How can he dictate us what we should or shouldn't do? And this is why we ask so that Ukraine will be a member of EU soon, because this is what we're fighting for. This is what Putin tells us. Give this dream up and I will stop fighting. And we are saying no, because it is our dream, because it is what we want to do. So we will fight for what we think is right for our country, for our future, for our children. Kira, the, 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 the fight for Ukraine is, uh, you know, uh, uh, the leadership is in Kyiv right now. You're in Kyiv right now. It's a city that is that, that the Russian forces are trying to besiege, especially from the north. I wanted to ask you specifically, we understand that that big military convoy with tanks and supply trucks from Russia, uh, you know, maybe about 25 to 30 kilometers away from Kyiv right now. What are you hearing from government and, and from the Ministry of Defense in Kyiv about how far away this convoy is? What is their intention? What is the plan for Kyiv? Because we heard that there were two explosions this morning. There is a threat of a possible missile strike as well. What is your understanding of what the Russian armed forces plan to do with Kyiv? We know that the plan for Kyiv is a siege, and we are getting ready for a siege. We are getting all the supplies, the food, the water, batteries, etc. in, because we are ready to fight, even if it will be a siege fight. We understand that Putin's, Putin will not be able to take Kyiv physically. Uh, it's just impossible. Uh, he doesn't have enough uh, troops on the ground. However, he will try to uh, threat us with the hunger. He will try to threat us with the, his missile attacks. And we are ready for all of that. We are ready because we know what we are fighting for. Ultimately, uh, Ms. Rudik, you're saying that if it comes down, it's going to be a battle for Kyiv that Ukraine is going to fight for? Of course. This is what we uh, are ready for. We understand that it could be a jewel in his plan to, to take on Kyiv, and we will not let him that happen. That's why I'm staying, because this is my home, and I am going to protect it. Could it be that... You know, what is happening right now in Kharkiv, you know, could happen next in Kyiv. Is that one of the possibilities that you're looking at? Because from the outside, it's difficult to judge. You know best, Kira, which is why I'm asking you, is it possible that the uh, uh, Putin's army is looking to, you know, like you said, symbolically take Kharkiv so that, you know, he has something to show for it because it's already been seven days of this invasion and then focus energies on Kyiv? It is possible that he will try to do it, but our plan is not to let him do it. So this is what this is what's going to happen. I can assure you that whatever Putin's plan is, our plan is to not to let him do it, do whatever he thinks. He will try to attack our cities with the uh, air strikes, and he already is doing it, and we are opposing it. He will try to uh, starve us, and we are getting ready to that. He is trying to. Um, <clears throat> Uh, demoralize us and it's not happening so ukraine um is fighting back and we will continue fighting back where are all those weapons the weapons that are sup supposed to come in uh, you know from the neighboring countries poland slovakia all of those countries are you know are to be sending you f uh, extra fighter jets more ammunition more missiles have they started coming in already kira uh, yes, they have started coming in and they, are, they have been distributed between, um, between the needed. So we are getting stronger every day. Ms. Rudik, and, yeah, Ms. go Rudik, ahead, Priti, sorry. No, no, no. Uh, Ms. Rudik, there's, you know, there's an attempt which uh, your president has gone ahead and said that many times right now, that these are war crimes. On the other hand, Russia says when you're going to arm your citizens, you're using them as human shields. So how can you call this a war crime? Because you've armed your citizenry. What are you even talking about? The Russian invaded our country. They have no say in what the war crime is. They have bombarded our uh, cities. They, they are trying to starve us. Like what they even have to say about the war crimes. So I wouldn't even uh, uh, discuss this position. He is Putin is crazy. Putin is, uh, uh, has said that he denies Ukraine a right to uh, exist. And now he's talking something about war crimes. Well, we will seek him in Hague uh, court where he will be prosecuted and hopefully hanged.
Go ahead, Shiv. I don't know to... if they're hanging people anymore. Kira, you were he... one of the first uh, Ukrainian MPs, you know, to pick up a rifle. That picture of you went viral. It has become the face of it. The day you did that, we had you here on India Today as well. Uh, you know, many people have since actually done that. We've got that picture. There you go. That's you on India Today with your Kalashnikov. It's a picture that has spoken... Uh, you know, uh, uh, so loudly to millions of people watching. It's inspired many people in your country as well. Kira, you still have that rifle. You've organized yeah. yourself with many others. And if the siege yeah. of Kiev actually happens, there you have it. That, that's Kira holding her rifle, Preeti. And in fact, uh, you, uh, like you were telling us, Kira, you will actually organize yourselves into a kind of citizen's military unit and go out and possibly be part of the fight if the siege happens in Kyiv? Of course, and this is what we are doing. We are training to uh, do that. How many of you are there? How many people like you are part of this military unit, the citizens' military unit, Kira? Well, my resistance unit is 25 people. So 25 okay. people in Kiev uh, and uh, in Kharkiv, because what we're getting to understand, uh, Kira, right now... No, oh, it's just one unit that I'm leading. You're leading a unit of 25. How many units are there in uh, Kiev? Many. Many. In Kharkiv, what are we looking at? Because right now with the paratroopers coming in, uh, you know, through the aerial route, there are, you know, uh, there's news uh, that there's a lot of street fight which is erupting in various pockets of Kharkiv. Is that true? Right. Well, there are many uh, similar units in Kharkiv as well, and they're fighting and they're bringing up the fight to Russian troops. All right. Uh, Shiv, do you have a question or, uh, you know, should we let uh, Kira go? Just, just one final question, uh, Kira. Uh, how prepared is Kyiv for this siege? The reason I'm asking is because an invading force will try and cut off your supply lines. They will try and cut off the logistics routes for, you know, uh, food and water and, you know, perhaps even electricity. Your TV tower was bombed yesterday. They might try and take away your internet as well. Uh, are there preparations on for that kind of thing? Yes. So that's why our army is trying to push uh, the invaders further so we will have more and more time uh, to prepare. Every day is precious now. All right. So we will, uh, so we will get ready and we'll be able to give Putin a very good fight. You know, Kira, because you're an MP, there's just news that's coming in, and we're going to, you know, ask you that one final question, Shiv, which is uh, news coming in that uh, Viktor Yanukovych is actually in Minsk, and he's the man that Putin wants to install as president after what what Putin says, uh, President Zelensky goes. <laughs> It's like uh, trying to put a zombie on top of uh, on Ukraine's government. All right. All right. We thought he was dead. I'm surprised he's alive. All right. Appreciate you joining us, uh, Kira. We're going to continue to come back uh, to you. Thank you. Good luck. We, we wish you strength and fortitude. Uh, it's going to be a long night ahead, uh, metaphorically speaking, where Kiev is concerned. Uh, strength to you. Thank you for joining us.